Hello and welcome. It's Lynn Franks here and the first in my new series of Frankly Speaking with Lynn Franks and Friends podcasts and also films on YouTube, of course. And I am so happy to be back after far too long a gap. And we are having a different theme with this series of podcasts, Frankly Speaking, where we're going to have a subject to talk about with my guests as we process over the next 20 weeks or however long it is. There's so many great subjects out there to talk about right now, positive subjects, subjects which help us look at the world, a world which is not an easy place to live right now and see how we can create a better future. And that is my theme. So my first guest, I'm really thrilled to welcome two incredible women, Barbara Michael John Free and Flavia Kate Peter, who do not have the easiest names in the world. <laughs> uh, who are two of the most extraordinary women I've ever met, and I've met a lot of very extraordinary women. They are celebrity witches. They are followers of the ancient pagan ways. They are also businesswomen, top-selling globally authors and creators of the most wonderful oracle kits, of which there seem to be many, many, because we sell lots of them in the shop. They have traveled the world. They have plugged into the mystiques of all kinds of belief systems, and they are living in the UK, they are both British, um, really focusing on what I call and what they call ancient beliefs in a modern world. And welcome, 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 Barbara and Flavia. And, and I'm sure you both agree, and I'll start, Barbara, with you, is the attraction so far in the whole area of witches, magic, sacred feminine from women mostly women, I'd say, of all ages, though, lots of young women. Why do you think that is? There's suddenly this incredible upsurge in, in interest. One of the reasons when I first started being a, a witch back in my teenage years, up in the Highlands of Scotland, there wasn't much talk about it. But what we've noticed over the years is people searching for an alternative, knowing that those that were coming into this, um, this time now have gone... I need something that I can connect with. Well, of course, as witches, we connect with the earth, we connect with the land, we connect with people. And it's part of past lives as well. A lot of people we meet who are suddenly going, oh, I need to, I'm fascinated by witchcraft and, and I really want to learn. It's amazing because it's for everybody. The one thing that puts a lot of people off, of course, is the name witch. But we we pen it saying it's wise, incredibly talented, creative healers. And that's who all of every single one of us. There is a witch that lives within every single one of us. And that's the wisdom from ancient times, from past lives. And it's living on the land. It's working with, you know, and Flavia will explain all about the elementals and nature but it's living with the magic that lives within us. And, in, and what's happening now is that women in particular, as well as men, as a lot of male witches as well, we're now empowering ourselves. We've been disempowered, you know, from childhood through past lives. And now it's coming to a point where we're going back to the old ways and recreating that magic that once lived on the land before the persecutions, be and, you know, when we look at the witch trials and everything that went on, people were persecuted because they were empowering themselves and standing up for themselves. And of course, nowadays, people are looking for that alternative. And it is actually the fastest growing religion in the world. It's incredible. That's incredible. So back to the persecutions, which were around mm -hmm. about five, seven hundred years ago. Um, of course, as we've discussed previously, uh, witches in those days were the midwives, the herbalists, the healers, the wise women. And um, both really all over the Western world, these, these holders of the ancient wisdom were destroyed. Why do you think that was? I mean, it was moving into a very much more patriarchal world. Do you think that was part of it? Lavia, what would you say? Um, yes. Hi. I would say that it was... Yeah, deliberately done. So, you know, for thousands of years, um, people like honoured the nature spirits, they worked with the land, like Barbara said. And then around like um, 500, 600 years, unfortunately, this is when like the religion really came in, it really swept in and superstition was abound. The Middle Ages was full of superstition. So if your crops failed and there was some 
old lady nearby, she was suddenly to blame for the crops failure. And this, this happened in every village across the land. People were getting blamed for things going wrong. Um, and so as religion became stronger and more powerful, they really wanted to put a stop. Those in power wanted to put a stop anyone who had their own self-empowerment, those who were going to the land, who were connecting with the Fae, like many witches did. That's where we get our secrets from, our secret potions and herbal recipes. And so they didn't want anyone to be in their power. They wanted the church to rule. And this was the very beginning of the downfall of the witch. This is what started with all the witch hunts because they wanted someone to be able to connect with source, as the church would call it, God, and so it had to go through a priest or a man to be able to even tap into that power. And of course, you can't, can't tap in going through another person because it all actually comes from within. Yeah. So, of course, with the persecutions, it was really hard because what through the religion, everyone's been taught to look outside of themselves to connect with a, a deity and a bigger power rather than themselves. It's all very, very clever. Whereas the witch's secret knows that everything is within them, contained within, as if we're like, we are a chalice, we are this vessel. We are like the cold. And, and in fact, even more than five, 600 years ago, mm -hmm. if you think back to the early Christians and, 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 and many religions really, it was 2000 years ago, it was when the oh. priestesses Oh, uh, yeah. well, really... Look at Hy look at Hypatia. She was uh, deemed as a witch, and Hypatia was a mathematician. She worked in Alexandria, and and she was dragged through the st uh, the streets, and her skin flayed off her body. So when you look at the, it goes way back, right back to Mesopotamia, Sumeria, when the magic was first introduced by the shining ones. You know, there's many ancient stories through Egypt to the time of Zentepi, through Sumeria, Babylon, Mesopotamia, those regions. Mm. And of course, it's been going on since records began where yeah. people who were empowered, people who had that magical belief that was gifted from the gods, suddenly, you know, it was deemed and everything was turned upside down. So as you rightfully say, it's been going on. And even today, last year, there was a woman in Saudi Arabia who was burnt for witchcraft. So it's still ongoing in Africa, Papua mm. New Guinea. It's still going on all over the world. There's about six or seven countries that still deem witchcraft as a, a, as a death penalty to this day. Yeah, it's, it's extraordinary. I was thinking even back to um, Moses coming down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments and he smote the tablets because down below his sister was rejoicing and they were supposedly worshiping the golden calf i mean to me mm. that was patriarchy killing yeah. off the, the, the matriarchy yeah, really. yeah absolutely mm -hmm. and you know and that's something that we're really really um mm -hmm. really hold like dear to our hearts we're really really passionate about understanding the way um the divine feminine uh, was completely yeah. wiped um, with the, you know, patriarchal um, um, coming in. And of course, that did happen around 2000 years ago. And it happened mm -hmm. all around, was it 325 um, AD, the um, Council mm -hmm. of Nicaea, when suddenly um, it was decided what was going to be put into the Bible and what was completely yeah. taken mm -hmm. out, you yeah. know. And it was from there, really, because really, I truly believe that um, at the beginning, if we're, if we're talking about a bit of religion here, <laughs> um, but when we when we look at how this all sort of seemed to start, I'm talking about changing the pat patriarchal um, from, you know, there was Jesus and that Mary Magdalene, but actually exactly. they were completely in balance with each other. It oh. was the divine feminine, the divine masculine. It's and even like the... the, the, the God, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I mean, the Holy yeah. Ghost, why the Holy Ghost? Why wasn't that the feminine? And of course it would have been. And I agree with you entirely. And, and I've read ancient, ancient teachings of Jesus where he said it was about fraternity and the women and men were always be equal. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, there's so many legends and stories, even about Leonardo da Vinci and the missing face of the Magdalene on the, yes. the Last yeah. Supper. I mean, there's so many stories and so many. And it's so healthy, of course, that it's now mm -hmm. coming back out. And if you look back at how witches have been portrayed for the last 500 years, you know, the whole 
around their cauldron doing bad spells and <laughs> exactly. big noses and warts oh, and the whole childhood sort of look of, of how we've been brought up um I mean, it's it's a very beautiful thing, feeling, knowing, and feeling, and practicing the magic. I'm sure you would agree because you're oh, both yeah. practitioners of it. Mm -hmm. And and it, as you said, Flavia, it's very much going into the land. It's about nature, and, and I think one of the attractions for young people is that they are so passionate about keeping Mother Earth whole and healthy and not exploiting. And it just works together, doesn't it? Oh, it's just amazing. I mean, it's incredible. This century, you know, we've seen such an upsurge, um, as you mentioned before, of, of magic, of people wanting to connect with this. Of course, you know, when we were brought up, you know, we, we were, you know, it was like, you know, you went to church and, you know, anything you did, you know, it was just so strict. Um, it was like the devil's work, you know, if you got into magic. And this century has been amazing because the millennials have been brought up on the power and the magic of Harry Potter. Yeah. So yes. they've come in into knowing all this. They know what a book of shadows is. They know what a wand is and they know how to, you know, to use it in a way. And they've been practicing in their bedrooms. And I remember, and I know that Barbara did the same when I was a little girl, I remember always thinking, I'm sure I should be able to turn my light switch off just by looking at it with my eyes, you know, and I used to try all this thinking, why isn't it working? Uh, yeah. But of course, that's that's like a really deep sort of like past life thing when everyone really did have their, have their magic. Um, yeah, so, you know, so, so you two have, without question, very specific gifts. Um, I don't know how you feel about, you know, are they very special to you or do other people have them? But they came from childhood, I think we're born into living a certain way. And some people get born into these, this current lifetime um, with the knowledge and the openness and awareness of, of, of more than what we can see and touch and feel. Barbara, you, you had a lot of experiences. You were telling me earlier, you brought up in Scotland, you were identified as the Highland Seer at a very young age by your predecessor, who was a very spiritual man uh, and leader. Tell us a bit about your story and how you got to where you are now. Well, my, my story is that the, one of the first memories is of people coming into my room, sitting on my bed. Um, I used to have a grandmother and she had one eye and she was all gnarled and everything. And I later went on to find that, that she was the Kaliach, you know, the, the hag of Scotland, the colonial woman, one of the goddesses of Scotland. And when I was growing up, I'd have a Native American at the end of my bed and I'd be you know, looking at him and I go and tell my mother I was adopted. So I go and tell my mother and she say, don't be so stupid. That's just your imagination. And I would go back to them and say to the, all the people standing around my bed. You're just, beings. They you're were just, people. Yes. Were, yeah, beings. They were real as real yeah. as slavery is now. And I'd say, I've just been told you're just part of my imagination. And, and, and they would say, well, but that's the key because what I was to find out, um, I didn't know in school I was dyslexic. And so I was belted and, and all the time, you know, caned every day for being stupid and an idiot, made to stand outside the classroom, put a dunce's hat on. Perfect. Put a witch's hat on, cone of power, off I went. Mm -hmm. And I'd run off out into nature and I would always speak to the animals. The animals would speak to me as they did with Flavia. And it was interesting when we met up, I used to look after baby ravens and Flavia used to look after baby rooks <laughs> as children. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, I didn't have any support and I felt very, very lonely. And I know a lot of people probably at the same story, you know, once we're going to watch this podcast. And so for me, when I met Swain McDonald, the Highland Seer, when I walked into the room and he just looked at me and he said, ah, you have the gift of the second sight lass. And that was it. And then I wouldn't tell my parents where I was going, but I go with my, my mother's friend who was secretly into this because my parents were church goers and they'd stick, stick me to church but the church didn't like me because I'd say oh there's a dead person here and there's a dead person there and and of course that was a, a no-no and like Flavia you know as we were growing up that was they tried to beat it out of me so working with Swain he explained everything that I wasn't crazy or mad or should be certified whatever it was they were suggesting and so he was that foundation for me to know that what I was seeing what I was feeling what I was imagining what I was imagining hearing feeling seeing was very real but how many people have that 
you know, um, growing up in the sort of 60s and 70s, there wasn't many people around. So you, it was very much, I felt very much a solitary witch. And, and, and a lot of people do when you don't have somebody. And nowadays it's great because we can share all this information. But how many people ended up in mental institutions that are gifted mediums mm. and seers and, and empaths that would just have some tablets, there you go, and all their abilities and gifts were dampened down. And everybody, everybody that comes onto this planet nowadays have gifts and abilities of different not everyone's a medium or a psychic but everybody has gifts gifts for working with animals or plants or mm -hmm. the earth or crops or whatever it may be that is a gift of wisdom it's really important that's beautiful that really is and Flavia for you growing up because you you and Barbara your work's slightly different in so much as you connect more with the fairies the fairy folk the fae do you want to talk a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, sure. From a very, very young um, young age, I was about three years old, when I when I, I consciously remember seeing a fairy. And my father was playing cricket, and um, I remember sort of like uh, wandering over to this great huge oak tree, and it was like hollow inside. And I remember peering up it, and I could see this tiny little light just buzzing around. And as I really, I just instantly knew it was a fairy. I instantly knew... An, and then I didn't even know what a fairy was, but I knew it was a fairy, if you know what I mean. I hadn't thought about them before. And we lived um, right in the middle of woods in rural Berkshire. So I spent my whole childhood like looking for fairies, playing with the fairies, leaving them food. Um, I was really fortunate. My father was really spiritual and he taught me to meditate at about the age of six or seven. And so I'd go to the trees and sit with my back against them and really commune and I've really connected with them in so much a way that I knew how to, to work with them and I understood who they were and I understood about the elements of them. And um, yeah, they, it was just a really magical thing. But the problem is if I shared that, you know, shared stories about the fairies, I knew instantly, you know, they'd be like, oh, there's no such thing as, as fairies. Oh, you are silly and all of this sort of thing. And I sort of shut myself down a little bit um because I'm the sort of person that was I'm a real empath so I feel everything everyone's feeling I can feel what everyone's thinking and and so and also because of being an empath you you tend to be a bit of a people pleaser and there's so many people pleasers out there and I really was when I was younger massively and so I wanted to people please in, even in a way that um affected my relationship with the fairies and, and it took it away a little bit and then um and then fortunately, it did all come back. It all massively came back. But I sort of shut down a little bit when my father left um, our family home. And, and that was really hard for me because he was the one that I really looked up to. And he taught me so much on that meditation side. But since I was really young as well, when I was really tiny, I used to be able to hear heavenly singing. And again, I knew that that was angels. So for me, I was real high vibe working with angels working um very much with fairies and that and that is still quite a high vibe even though they they work with the earth but you've got earth fairies air fire and water so it's very much working with the elements and what I worked out was once you've sussed each one and brought into your life then you're in that full balance and they really want to help us to be in full balance we yeah. need to be obviously for this earth this whole planet that's beautiful yes so what about rituals and covens and all the sort of classic stories that we hear which is do I mean I've done I do rituals myself I've done them for years and yeah. I don't even know really what do we mean by covens isn't that just a mm. circle of women that come together mm -hmm. regularly and do their rituals mm. what, how would you really, describe yes. it Barbara what would you say I mean you know, there's been talk of it since again, you know, and especially in the witch hunt persecutions about um, witches coming together in covens. I mean, there's a, a trial on Berwick on Tweed, wasn't it, mm. with his, uh, King James VI? Or was it, you'll yeah. know more, I always... And James I of England. James I of Scotland, England. Yeah. And I go, <laughs> grr, um, with him. <laughs> and, you know, it was the talk of that a coven had come together and they caused the, the crossing across the ocean. Mm. I think it was to do with Anne, was it? And so there was a big trial mm. of witches in Berwick-on-Pont Tweed about that. And there's lots of stories about covens coming together. 
the interesting thing is that up in Scotland, because the witches were all solitary and they couldn't come together because you'd have to travel hundreds of miles <laughs> to get to the next witch. So it was more sort of focused down in England. And then, you know, down in the 90, back in the 1960s, when uh, Gerald Gardner and many others like Raymond Buckland came together and talked about the covens as they formed, you know, the, the offshoot of Wicca from witchcraft, because there is a difference. Um, it's, it is, as you say, a group of women, a group of men and women. Traditionally, it's 13. Um, and it's about coming together and, as you say, doing rituals, doing spells on the Sabbaths, on the Esbats, um, certain times, the festivals like Sahasawain, Sahain, as we call it in Scotland. So it's a coming together of purpose of, of working magic and in particular with the moon phases and the eclipses and the lunar cycles and many other things. And for a lot of people, they think, oh, this is, you know, oh, I have to be in a coven. You don't. You can be a solitary witch. There's so many different types of witches nowadays. And it's and it's good because if people are starting out, where do I go? But I've heard so many reports of people being in a part of a coven, having to come out. They can't cope with it because of the old, you've got to do it our way. And myself and Flavia, is, the magic lives with you. You do it your way. We just help and support those witchlets, especially the we call the teenagers witchlets. Mm. So, yes, there are rituals, there are covens. It's been going on again since recorded time. But nowadays, it seems to be more solitary, mm. you know. But there's a lot on the internet as well. Yeah. They've been doing gatherings and, and mm. habits. Yeah, I was on with the... one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite a few hundred for Semaine, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And of course, the more that gather together, the more powerful it is. Cone and so that's power is, that's that's yeah. that's one of the main reasons as well for that coven to really get that cone of power. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and let's talk about spells because we would always assume that the spells offer good. Obviously, people can use magic in a negative way, but that can be very dangerous because it often rebounds on them. Yeah. But traditionally, as you mentioned even earlier, Flavia, the, the, the spells are oh, for agriculture, for having a good harvest, for the well-being of the community. Um, I, I mean, there's always been, I suppose, love potions are always rather classic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's always been like the love potions and the charms and so many people, you know, went to a witch or the wise woman of the village or a charm. And quite often that, you know, they'd be handed like a little poppet doll um, that's where the word pop it like hello pop it but that's where it comes from maybe it is a wax effigy and magic would be like just absolutely intention basically was then put into that doll whether it was for a love spell for someone to fall in love with them or to bring them wealth or abundance or whatever that may might be or health and so the witch would work with um herbs as well maybe entwining like a little bit of rosemary around a wax effigy um if they wanted to um like invoke um, sort of like really beautiful memories or whatever it, whatever the herb is uh, for whatever. So it's right, really working with, um, with nature. And so with spell casting, it's all about, um, it is all about your intention, but what we firmly believe and what we've in our, our experience is you always need to put action into something because you need to put energy into something. If you're completely connected and you, and you pray and you ask for something, yes, that will absolutely come about. But you have to wait and you have to believe, wait for it to come. When you spell cast, you're working with the potent energies of the universe and with, with the magical gifts of the earth or whichever, whatever you want to use in your spell. And so when you're putting that action and energy into it, something will come about much quicker. So you'll choose the right moon phase. You know, if you want a massive abundance, you'll work with a full moon when it's at its absolute optimum energy. If you're wanting to sort of like banish someone or, or get rid of a situation in your life, then you'll want to be working with the moon after the full moon. So when it starts waning, so it's getting rid of and it's all weakening down and then you banish it down to the dark moon. So it's getting to know your moon phases. It's getting to know nature. It's 
it's understanding the directions you know if you're facing the direction of north that's connecting with the ancestors so you might want to bring some ancestral magic into it or you're facing the north and that's the cold icy you know callous bite of winter so if you want to freeze out a situation that's the direction you're standing if you want to bring in love and passion into your life you'll stand in the direction of the south you're bringing the warmth of the fire to invoke that so being a witch is all you it's knowing your nature and being connected with nature although that's not a problem because you'll find that every single natural witch just loves nature you know they're just like oh just even they just breathe their wishes on the on the breath of the wind you know any any witch just loves nature and that isn't mainly what it's all about even pagan pagan means country dweller that's what it actually means for people oh they're all pagans yeah we live in the country yes we are pagans <laughs> you know so so that's where spell casting comes in and of course we've all seen like in disney disney's amazing because disney's brought magic into this realm and what Walt Disney did, he actually, you know, like the artists who draw fairies from the other realms, they can see, and he could see, and he's brought magic into this world. Unfortunately, a lot of people think, oh, it's just made up and it's imagination, it's just Disney. But he was very, very clever and a master in his own right for doing that, I truly believe anyway. And so bringing in that magic, we've all watched like Maleficent <laughs> or any evil queen with a finger pointed, I'm not going to point to that finger pointed and seeing powers of extremity coming from their finger and how many people want to be able to manipulate and work with the forces to be able to bring about what they want well we can do that okay it's not going to be necessarily in that extreme but actually when it all boils down to it all comes down to your intention yeah yeah yeah. And that's all it boils down to. Yeah. So Barbara and I now, we've got to the point now, we're just instantly manifesting. We don't even really need to do any actual spells and bringing in the actual, we've got to the point now, mm. we're just going, right, I really want that to happen. And hey, presto, it just does. Yeah. Just, when you get there, you're just always instantly manifesting. And that is what every single person should be because when we've all been taught this, we are all gods. We are all goddess. We are all creators. And yeah. that's no, I completely agree. Absolutely yeah. agree. I manifest as well. And it's yes, I'm once sure. you plug into that side of yourself that has the knowledge that you can manifest and the and it can accelerate the way things happen in your life, it's 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 extraordinary. It really is. Yeah. I mean, I do think there's a sort of possible downside where which I've experienced where I think I want something so badly and I manifest it and of course it's not what I want and uh it doesn't serve me no, and that's where the phrase be careful what, what you, you wish, wish for, for comes in <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely yeah we've all been there yeah. and make sure you've got everything together don't forget any ingredients I had a friend of oh, mine yeah, who's a, a witch story who's a witch in Salem and she's got her own shop over there and we were talking about spells and manifestation and that. And she told me the story that she was wanting a man to come into her life. And she manifested what he'd look like and how tall he was and the job and everything. And then one day he walked into the shop and he walked into the shop and he stood there and he smiled at her. And she went, hey, and he didn't have any teeth. And so <laughs> she just disregarded him and I said well that would be me and I'd take him straight to the dentist got him a pair of false teeth but what the, the point of it is was she didn't say I want good teeth as well, well so she he had everything else he had everything else, had everything I'm, else. I'm going to tell you a, a joke now if I may <laughs> which I don't usually do on podcasts but this is so appropriate I don't know if you know this one there was an old lady that lived in in a in a forest, in a little cottage, had no money, just enough to feed. One day there was a knock on the door and she opened up another little old lady standing there and she said, can I come in? Can you warm me by my, you're with your fire and can you feed me? So she, although she had nothing herself, she took the little old woman in who turned out to be a witch. She gave her food, she made her warm and the witch said, you've been so kind to me, I'm gonna give you three wishes. So, uh, so the um, first old lady said, okay, please make me young and beautiful and a princess. So the witch went boom and she was, suddenly everything she wanted to be so the second thing is my second wish is I'd like to be living in a palace uh, with my uh, all my wealth and beautiful things around me so next thing the witch made her a princess in a beautiful palace and she said and the third thing I'd like you to take my old cat and turn him into a beautiful prince she said, boom and there's this beautiful prince standing in front of her and he said I bet you wish you hadn't had me neutered now uh <laughs> 
that was appropriate. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that exactly. was what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, all possibilities. All possibilities. Yeah. And, and what about sacred spaces? Because obviously not now, it's not so easy, but before COVID, you were doing sacred trips um, mm. yourselves uh, around Americas, connecting in with Native American, Indigenous people. You did a lot of trips to Egypt, to the big yeah. pyramids. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about the power of sacred space? It, it's incredible. I mean, when I grew up in Scotland, we had a lot of sacred sites around us. So as a little girl, I was up in the, the stones, the Clava stones, right beside Culloden Battlefield. And then um, the power of place is incredible. And for me, it's, it's actually when I went to America and started working with the Native American people who taught me about boundaries and thresholds and about placing tobacco. And of course you go through that and it wasn't until I'd done a Sundance once. And before you go into the Sundance, you place um, your offerings and one Sundancer didn't. And as soon as he stepped in, he just collapsed in, in the center of that sacred space. And I've seen it time and time again in Egypt. And of course, in sacred sites before, for example, in the temple of Karnak and Luxor, you would, there was a Roman bath that, which has recently been uncovered and you would cleanse, you would do ceremonies and rituals before you entered into that space. And time and time again on trips to Egypt and America, we've seen people going into sacred sites like medicine wheels and they just fall down. I saw one woman broke a leg right in front of me we were taking, there was a group going into the Great Pyramids and we'd done some ceremony. Some people didn't want to do it and others walked in who'd done the ceremony and others were being sick. They were throwing up at the boundary space. And so with sacred sites, it's really important to respect whatever you, we see it all the time at Avery Mm. where people just wander around and there's, there is a disrespect for the ancestors of power and place. And it's so important that before any of us, and even coming into a house, you know, you do a prayer, you ask permission. You know, I was always taught wherever I traveled, you know, whatever land I was going on, very much like the Pope, you know, who gets there and he gets down and he kisses the ground. (laughs) That actually originates actually from a very old Sumerian ritual of, of, of respecting the place of getting down of, honouring those who'd walked before us. And that's where that originates Mm. from. But it doesn't happen. And it's lacking these days that people should honour the place of power (laughs) and spirit and the ancestors. That's beautiful. And I think maybe one of the things for me from this whole lockdown couple of years we've had is really being present and more connected with the ground. I mean, I'm very fortunate to be living in the sacred land in between Stonehenge and Glastonbury Tor. Mm -hmm. But I think just generally, or for a lot of us, having to stay still and stay connected is has been very, very important. You you talked earlier about Wiccan, the difference between Wiccan and mm-hmm. witches, Barbara. What is the difference between being Wiccan and witches? It, it's, it's the old adage of somebody makes up a name. I mean, traditional witchcraft works with the people of the land. So I'm from Scotland. It wasn't called Scottish witchcraft. Um, It was known as craft of the wise. There was no names. People love to put names on things. And back in the 1960s, uh, Gerald Gardner termed um, a sort of offshoot of uh, known as Wicca. So people who are Wiccans, it gets very confusing Mm. because they say, People who are Wiccans are not necessarily witches and right. pagans. And it, it gets, it's this very sort of, there's not a, a clear defined line about it. Yeah. For example, in America, a lot of people are Wiccans. Yes. And then they'll go on about different things. And that was formed in 1960 in that time period where he was bringing in wisdom from all different esoteric fields like the Golden Dawn or the Knights Templar or the Cathars and, you know, especially to do, and he was in that time period where Madame Belensky and many other um, ancient scholars were bringing all this wisdom and this craft together. So nowadays people are tending to sort of work with witchcraft which is the craft of the witch, the craft of the land, the craft of the wise. 
But I really feel that when people start saying I'm this or I'm that or I'm the next thing, I just, mm. you know, I'm Barbara, <laughs> yeah, you know, absolutely. and 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 it gets too complicated yeah. when people are saying I'm a grandmaster of this or I'm a third degree witch of that. So for me and Flavia, we mm. stay well clear of that. Yes. I think what we stay clear of are, are the rules and people are like, we shouldn't do it like that because mm-hmm. it should be like that. No. It really shouldn't. And there's many people that come into our shop or meet us at at shows and they're like saying, I really love, I really feel like I am a witch, but I'm not quite sure how to do this. And I think I'm doing this wrong. And we say, but you're not doing it wrong. How could you possibly do it wrong? It's what comes from within it. What's come from your heart and what makes your heart sing. And, you know, we're all, everyone is different. Every single one of us is different. So we would approach our connection with the goddess. We would approach mm-hmm. our connection with divinity, our own divinity, different because we are all different. Mm-hmm. So there can't be complete uh, uh, rules. You know, what feels right for some isn't mm-hmm. right for another. And what I find as well, and as Flavia finds, you know, when some people say, well, we work with the Lord or Lady, or we work with this goddess, or we do this. And when I was traveling around, I was doing a lot of shamanic work in my sort of 30s and 40s and I got confused with all the different medicine wheels and all the different directions and all the different things and so again it's very much what's happening now and what we're seeing with a lot of people writing books about witchcraft is that a lot of people are also saying look do it your way mm-hmm. you know call yourself if you want to be a sea witch or a green witch mm-hmm. or an eclectic witch mm-hmm. eclectic witch just works with having a solitary it's just a name at the end of the day what's important is your integrity and how you utilize that magic that's beautiful and you're very prolific both of you not only running your own fashion business bringing these wonderful <laughs> goddess garments from around the world and your own shop but the books and the oracle cards that you are constantly putting out I mean I can't keep up with it myself and I sell them we can't <laughs> we can't so there's so much knowledge and wisdom that you two have learned and were born with as well yeah. um, that you put into these cards and put into these books. You're, I mean, your diary this year, that is, that's your first diary, isn't it? That was the first diary. one, yes. And it's a, it's a bestseller and Amazon bestseller, bestseller throughout the country already. Yeah. Um, what, where does the inspiration come? I mean, what, what makes you think it's time to do a new book on the moon? Or I know you're working on Oracle cards for the moon cards right now. Yeah, we, we are. Uh, we're so driven. And when Barbara and I met, we, we both held the same vision and we were just so surprised that we did. And when we met, like in heart to heart, as I said, and when they met, it was murder. What I mean by that, <laughs> when we met, the, whole, the energies from us both went... Phew! Uh, we just can't contain ourselves. It's as if we've just got this download of information going, right, now you've got to do this. We're literally directed by spirit. And yeah. that's how Barbara and I have always worked. And that's why things work out really well for us, because we're we're good listeners and we just follow the path of what we're meant to be doing. So literally, yes, we have got a massive list on our iPad of everything that we want to do. And believe me, that list is, um, is pretty much endless. So we're actually at that point going, Yes, we've got about, we've got, I think uh, the 10th Oracle deck is about to come out next year. And that is the Witch's Moon Magic, which we're really excited about. And literally, we've got so much that we want to do. We're thinking, there's not enough time. (laughs) So really, it just, where does it come from? It comes from inspiration that's just it, it, it literally is bubbling within us we've just yeah, like got this I completely resonate. yeah yeah I feel so connected with you too because I feel exactly the same and oh, there's not enough time no because we are running out of time in this world to make this new future and yes. I know and I know you two feel the same way that we can collectively create and collaborate and create something that is for the generations to come that will mm-hmm. save mother earth that will mm-hmm. take away the corruption and the shadow there i mean there's always shadow where there's the light we know that absolutely but it's just about the balance and the imbalance right now has been really dreadful so if uh, i was to ask you, which i am asking you <laughs> how you see the future could be your vision of what the world could look like I know we could be here for a week or more talking about it but I'm going to finish all these podcasts of the new series asking my guests who are coming from all sorts of backgrounds and disciplines the same question how do you see the future what could work do you see it led by women do you see it with the sacred feminine 
and the ancient ways part of it. I, I'm putting words in your mouth because uh, <laughs> I, I think I think the first thing. Sorry, <laughs> we were both going to say that we'll share this. I think the most important thing is is to empower people first of all because if you look at history, what's history about? Disempowering everybody, um, and that's what's going on now. And it's about getting getting reaching out to people and i'm sure we'll all agree on this one and empowering them all and saying you are amazing you are beautiful you're incredible you have this amazing gift and if the most important thing for us and what we do is in our message with our decks our books our diary is empowerment 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 um yes and you see, our work, when I met Barbara and she agreed with me, I thought, our work is like to bring back the magic of the old ways. And I just want, imagine just being in a, just a beautiful forest in a wood and you come across this cave that's just completely covered in ivy and you pull a bit of the, the ivy back and you walk into this entrance and there's a shrine to the goddess. How does that make you feel? I just like mm. old Goosey. And that is how it used to be. Imagine Morgana or Morgan, Morgan Le Fay walking through the woods and just worshipping the goddess like that. When, and, this, and this is what happened when Christianity was spreading across the land. Now, patriarchal you know, uh, rule came in and everyone forgot that we have within our bodies, in every single cell, we have the essence of the goddess within us. And the vision would just, is just so amazing. Like everyone realized that we are actually the goddess incarnate, that we have the power of her within us. Once everyone realized that, they can just suddenly power up themselves without anyone telling them whatever, because it has to come from in here. People could tell you you're amazing until they're blue in the face. And if you don't mm -hmm. believe it yourself, you know, yeah. it, you know, it doesn't work. But what if people just believe that actually, yes, there is the goddess and this is all the goddess and we are actually standing upon her in her physical form. She is in everything. If everyone could just know that and then just have their eyes open to the magic of that, that would produce a most beautiful world. <laughs> and, and also, and, that, and that's absolutely amazing, also, it's it's very much about belief system. Um, it's 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 all about you know everything that's going on at the moment. What is this about? What I was going back to that disempowerment, mm. taking away the magic. Thank goodness for Harry Potter and, and discovery of witches and everything that's going on at the moment, which is you know which is incredible. Yeah. But it's also about supporting one another. Yeah. You know, being there for everybody else. And of course, with everything that's gone on with COVID. A lot of that happened, but what we're seeing at the moment is a lot of negativity and people being down and depressed because all of a sudden what's happened with COVID is what is the future? You know, we've always, this has sort of put a big block in going forward into the future. And with what's happening with everybody, all the environmentalists and the children, like that young lady, is she can't Greta. remember, Greta, and people like that, it's saying, look after our earth, nurture our earth. You know, I know the government got together, but as a collective consciousness, if we can all be a collective consciousness and go, if we don't have the earth, we don't have a home. And so we have to, all of us, seed that together if, as a collective group. Exactly. If everyone was a witch, if everyone <laughs> had that love in their heart for nature, if everyone believed in fairies like our ancestors absolutely did, yeah. they wouldn't walk across a meadow without leaving them an offering. Yeah. They wouldn't walk into the woods without leaving them an offering. Everyone understood that within themselves, they were connected to the fairies themselves. We we're all born under star signs. So we've all got an element in us, whether we're under an earth sign, or air, fire or water. And when we start working with that, we get into balance. So if everyone was in that balance and harmony with nature, that that would actually just bring, that's what bring, would bring the balance. And that's what we need is the yeah. balance. And us teachers, we all taught leading up to 2012. And 2012, we all believed was the, the catalyst, something amazing was going to happen. And what we all worked with was that balance. Can you pass through the eye of a needle? Or have you got loads of stuff that you're holding onto, all your doubts, fears, and worries? How much of that have you got? And we all asked ourselves that, can we walk up? go through the eye of the needle. Now, 2012 passed, but everything started to change. We knew that the old institutes 
and everything that ruled that could no longer sustain in the new energies would start to crumble. And we're watching that happen now, mm, all yeah. the old, you know, mm. um, companies and things which cannot hold up. We've got the millennials, they've all come in. These beings are amazing. They've come in with a mission. We're, we're the old ones, we're the old way showers. <laughs> These ones are coming in fighting. Oh, now. Yeah. Gen Z, even that's after the millennials, because yeah. they're moving on. And yeah, they are actually, aren't they? Ages <laughs> and early 20s, and they're an amazing, amazing aren't they? Uh, generation of particularly mm. the young women. They're so brave and powerful. And the indigenous young women that we saw over in Scotland, mm. actually in Glasgow for COP, I mean, they were the most inspirational voices of all. So that's mm. what we are here for, isn't it? We've chosen exactly. to be born to be At this time, this time yeah. as the wisdom keepers to hold open the doors and show the directions and that's just beautiful and for people and i'm sure there will be many that will want to get in touch with you we will put the details uh with the podcast but w what's the name of the town you live in and where is it so people can find you and your lovely <laughs> shops it's the shop's called arnimetius after the goddess of the land of the of the grove the water and the grove and it's in Market Street, in Buxton, in Derbyshire. And if people just Google the purple shop, we come oh, up. Wow. Or if they Google spirit visions, as you said already, our names are a bit of a mouthful to remember. But, but if you just Google, <laughs> if you just put in the purple shop or, um, yeah, spirit we'll visions, find they'll we'll find us. We'll all here anyway. Yeah. And at Seed, you know, we're huge fans of both of you. We love having your Oracle cards and books and clothes here. So for those who can't get quite as far as Derbyshire <laughs> and they want, they're anywhere near Somerset, come and visit us. And yes. we yeah. hope you'll be here for many visits. Uh, um, we, hope so. and we also hope we're going to be doing collaborations together. Yes. I think you're both absolutely incredible and awe-inspiring and just beautiful women of today, the wisdom keepers, the sage, yeah. the seers. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> God bless you. And uh, we will Blessed meet again be. very soon. Thank Blessed you. Be. Bye. Be. Bye. Bye. Well, after finding out so much about magic in the modern age from our special guest celebrity witches, Barbara Meckeljohn Free and Flavia Kate Peters, I would like to use their inspiration for our seed exercise for this podcast. I'd like you to think about a way to really activate the magic in your life. Now, this can be a variety of different ways. And one of them, of course, is to get into nature. So it could be just promising yourself to have a walk in nature in some wild lands near you. Or it could be spending time in your garden. It could be being open to the elements and see if you can spot the fairies at the bottom of your garden. It could also be creating ritual, making an altar, bringing your crystals into daily life. Whatever it is that you feel will activate the magic in your life, can I challenge you to do that, inspired by this podcast this week? Thank you so much for listening and taking part. We will be putting up this new series of Frankly Speaking with Lynn Franks and Friends every two weeks on a Friday morning, and I do hope you'll be back with us again. If you like what you hear and want to learn more practical methods to help you plant the seeds in your own empowerment journey, then please subscribe to this podcast, rate it and review. Also, make sure to join our Seed Hub Club if you haven't already. And together with thousands of like-minded women, you'll make friends, you can promote your business and share your stories. Visit the seedhub.club to find out more about our community of wise women of all ages dedicated to creating a new, harmonious society based on love, integrity, and collaboration. Until then, this is Lynn saying, have a great couple of weeks and I'll see you next time. Namaste. Namaste.